started, we're all familiar with the kinetic chain, kinetic link. I'm going to start with some concepts first and then show a bunch of exercises because one of the big things with a lot of this is how do we apply the exercises within your programming. Everyone's got different programming here. We've had a lot of great talks on structure, on setting things up, on having the right framework, and then how do we actually implement sport-specific exercises for what we're doing. If we think back to the concept of summation of forces, that hopefully makes us understand why and when we implement the exercises we do. So from a standpoint of most rotational sports, this is a baseball example, but it's not that dissimilar in most rotational environments. We have the pelvis and the thorax that controls most of what we do from a movement standpoint. This is at foot contact, so the beginning of the movement, max external rotation, and then ball release. So, you know, you've got three phases of most types of rotational movements. And if we don't look at what's happening at the pelvis and the thorax from a movement mechanic standpoint, then we don't really know where we're supposed to load and how we're supposed to load. And the kinematic sequence of all these movements is really important for us to understand. So I know a lot of you work across sports, you have a lot of things going on, but make sure you understand the movement mechanics of the sports that you're working with because there are differences. There are similarities, of course. We've got to load from the ground up. We've got to transfer our forces. We've got to make sure that the summation is in the right sequence. But there are significant differences between, say, a tennis serve and a baseball throw, for example. Our hips and shoulders are completely different at contact or at ball release. So we don't really consider them the same motion. A lot of people will simplify it and say it's somewhat similar, which it is, but there's a lot of differences with how much we open up, how much we rotate, where the contribution of forces come from. So be aware that we don't want to train all these athletes exactly the same. We want to make sure we understand the appropriate loading mechanics that we need to apply. From the perspective here, look down the chain. You know, we talk a lot about arm issues in a lot of these sports. That's where we see a lot of injuries. But in most of these injuries, a lot of the time there's an issue in the lower back and even lower down the chain at the ankle first. There's this multiple year progression of pain, discomfort, instability that occurs lower down the chain before we see the significant upper extremity injury. So with any of these rotational sports, there's usually some challenges in the lower back, in the hips, and in the ankles. So if we're not doing effective screening, not so much from an injury pr prediction standpoint, but more so from a training specific standpoint, we spend quite a bit of time on the diagnostics to make sure that we're not missing any of these things up the chain because most of the time we're dealing with symptoms when they come. They've got this issue or that issue and we have to work our way back down. It's very rare that the symptom is where the cause is. We know that 